Hi guys and happy Friday. It is Friday. It's dreary, it's rainy, but it's very, very warm. And today I wanted to do something special. Something uh, really special because this morning um, I just pulled out a bunch of um, my old photos and was just spinning. And uh, so I wanted to share some things with you. What we're going to talk about today is small records for the most part small records, 1910s, maybe up to 20 or whatever. Um, I think one of these Columbia's could be a turn of the century even. But um, so many fun things. There's so many fun aspects to collecting uh, antique records. And uh, there's so much that you learn over the years. So anyway, what I have here... Um, I have two examples of players that would have been from the era uh, of these little records. And uh, one of them is this tiny little 7x7 seven seven dovetailed wooden crank phono. It has a number 2 Victrola reproducer on it. And it is just a beautiful piece. It's one of my favorites because it's so compact that it seems like it was made for these little records and uh, it's really cute The other thing a kid might have played um, their little wonders on is something like this. This is an amazing thing. This is a Bing Pygmy phone. Um, these had pretty bad sound, but I'm sure, you know, look, they're over 100 years old. I'm sure that uh, when they were new, they sounded a little better. <laughs> oh, but these are really fun, really hard to get in working condition. And the graphics are just phenomenal. They are just a beautiful thing, all contained in a tiny box. So, um, so here you can see the little uh, pygmy phone playing. And uh, let's talk about records. I have two pygmy phones here. I have two. 
uh, the working one and the one that I had for parts. Uh, the thing is, the uh, one for parts had the better tin. This tin was pretty beat up. But to get the motor in and out, you'd have to bend these. I just didn't want to deal with that. One day I'll do that. One day I'll get the, the working one into the better tin. These are beautiful. Very hard to find. Extremely rare. And uh, to find one working is remarkable. Well, I worked on this until it worked. And uh, that's why I have uh, the one for parts also. All right, record collecting. It's so much fun. <laughs> and uh, back in the day, you could get just about any number of fun things or a lot of giveaways and things like that by the record stores and whatnot. Um, the original little needles would come in these beautiful tiny little boxes. Uh, this one has nipper, of course. Uh, 200 finest steel needles. Beautiful. Nowadays, of course, you can get them at the Antique Photo Show or on eBay. You bu I buy them in packs of 500. Uh, mostly soft and medium. I don't use loud very often. I have them if I need them for like a really rough record. But for the most part, I use soft or medium. Um, record brushes very fun and the early ones would have had advertised some of them had advertising of an artist on it or it had the name of the store this one just happens to be a little bit later this is a deca record brush velvet record brush these are awesome and then they would have they would have things like these so you could little promos i believe steve madera gave me this his master's voice how beautiful that is. Then there were things like this. Index of Victor Records. Look at this beautiful little leather bound book. And you know, unlike today where people have mega massive collections where their journals are this wide. Um, it's just a little tiny little journal. And inside the journal the person put um, the new Victor Records April 1st list of records that will be published in the Saturday Evening Post and it's really beautiful and uh, in that little book the person was checking off some of the things they wanted they slid this little thing into the binder of their uh, journal here and uh, filled in their records very very beautiful so, little pieces of history that are so exciting to find. Um, me and Raymond have been heavy-duty collectors of children's records for a long time. And, of course, I, I'm pretty much... Um, I got him... I was pretty much the one that got him into uh, antique uh, phonographs and things like that. But um, we are both fanatics now, and... Uh, the Antique Phonograph Show is one of our favorite things ever. And uh, it's where we met Kurt Nock. It's just uh, a, a wonderful thing. So let's talk about little records. I'll start out with three that are not children's records, but they are small early records. This is a 7-inch early Victor record. This is uh, Victor 1964 Arthur Collins, the Poobah of Blackville Town. Very beautiful, early little 7-inch shellac. And then we have a little larger Victor record. I believe this one is an 8-inch. And this one is Victor 4809. Oh, this is Children's Series, number 3, Winkin', Blinkin', and Nod. Look at that beautiful 8-inch old, old Victor. This probably has the date on the back, but I cannot read anymore. It definitely has the date on that little uh, sticker right there. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, beautiful early, probably turn of the century piece. 
You got that in a Nox auction. Beautiful. And let's look at one more 7 inch. Uh, this one is a Columbia disc record. Columbia Phonographs. This is, is there anything else you'd like? Number 693 Tenor Solo. Um, the price is on, uh, the price is in the little printout, five cents back in the day. It was a beautiful, beautiful grand prize, Columbia Phonograph Company, uh, grand prize, New York, London, Paris, 1900. Look how beautiful that is. And they're so thick and beautiful. That's why they survived. All right. Let's get into tiny records. <laughs> really fun. All right, the first one, um, the first ones are little wonders. A lot of people, I need my notes here. A lot of people are familiar with little wonders. I have been collecting them for many, many years. I have well over a hundred. And um, they had a few different label styles. They had regular printed labels like this in orange. They had printed labels in white. And they had embossed labels like that. So these are so much fun to collect because they're so tiny. And um, Nock used to say, uh, sell these disco file sleeves, which you can get online too, because so I don't know if Kurt is still in business, but um, these little disco file sleeves fit them perfectly. They're made for little wonders and Harper Collins and stuff like that, but aren't they beautiful? And what we're going to do is play an example of one of these. Um, it's going to be when it's nighttime down in Burgundy. And this is Little Wonder number 76. And we're playing it on the Plasco children's phonograph that would have had decals all around the bottom when it was new. Really cute. Beautiful bubble books. Um, book that sings. This is by the Harper Collins, uh, Harper Columbia. I said Harper Collins before too, but I'm at Harper Columbia. So here is the animal bubble book set. These were beautiful old children's sets. And then here we have the Merry Midgets. Let's take it out. These are so fabulous. The Merry Midgets, the little book. 
And then inside you have a, a regular storybook. Beautiful artwork and your little records in pockets. Isn't that gorgeous? And um, the little song that we're going to play from um, the Bubble Book series is uh, from the Merry Midgets. And it's called Daddy Long Legs and Floppy Fly. And what we're going to, it's Harper Columbia number 1153. We're going to play this on a modern reproduction phonograph from India that they probably still make. Um, very interesting little piece that they were doing um, reproductions of, and it turned out being really fun. I mean, like I said, with children's records and children's photographs, the sound quality is not the best. But let me tell you something. The phonograph is beautiful, and I love it. So let's go. We have Emerson 6-inch records. Look how cute. I have a bunch of these also. I have a whole book full of Emersons. And these are phenomenal. These were not children's records, but they had like a miniature sleeve and everything. So, uh, what's this one? The Wedding of the Irish and the Scotch. Emerson Phonograph Company, New York, New York. And I'm going to play one of these for you on a very interesting phonograph. It is a circus drum phonograph um, for children by an unknown maker. I can't find the make on it. And uh, we're going to play Emerson 527 Georgia Grind. Thank you. 
Next up, we have these beautiful Little Tots Nursery Tunes books. These are another one that's really hard to find. Um, beautiful silk cord tying it together, a little paper book. And um, what we have here is the Jolly Game Book, book number three. And inside you have your records in little envelopes. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And you also have, in this little glassine paper here, you have cards, um, beautiful cards, with the lyrics and things about the story. Beautiful old artwork, as you can see. Just phenomenal. How to play the game. Hmm. Very fun. Very beautiful. And uh, this one had its cards and its records and its book. And the book is in beautiful condition. I don't know how that's possible because most of these things got so trashed over the years because they belong to kids. And I'm going to play something from this. Uh, we're going to play Little Tots Nursery Tunes 107-A. We're going to play it on a Lindstrom Model 777. We're going to play London Bridge is Falling Down. The last um, record we're going to look at today um, are, is a book like, is this book, Pied Piper Records for Children. This one is Cowboy Songs, and uh, it, there were available, there were dance records, marches, nursery rhymes, and cowboy songs. Very beautiful. And here's what the uh, records look like in their little sleeves. Very beautiful. And what we're going to play from this is uh, Pied Piper Records for Children, P-21-A. She'll be coming around the mountain. We're going to play this on a Vanity Fair model 603, the Panda Phono. Oh, 
So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I, I mean, small records go on and on and on. I wanted to do the early small records. I mean, we were, you know, they were still making small children's records in the 40s and 50s. So, um, but I wanted to do these early ones and uh, uh, share some of those with you. I have a lot more children's records, a lot more small and oddball shape, uh, oddball size. But um, these are very old, and I wanted to uh, share them with you. So, that's it for me, guys. I hope you're having a magical, mystical, musical Friday. Comment, subscribe, spread that love. Tink merch below, Radio Tink podcast link below. Till next time, remember, I love you all. I'll be back with you very soon because I have a bunch of records from Craig. I got some really cool new horror stuff, and... Uh, uh, memorabilia, not records, but uh, great new horror stuff to show you. But for today, I wanted to do this with the beautiful, beautiful old records. Uh, 1910s on these. So, and some, some like the Columbia disc, turn of the century. Beautiful stuff. So, I'll talk to you later. Mwah.